Welcome to Old Guys Gentlemen Flex Fountain Pens, and this is episode number 56, I believe. Today, what I'm going to be talking about is the Osprey Milano Ebonite Pen. Got it through uh, Peyton Street Pens. I've bought a few pens from them and been happy pretty much all the time. So they're a good um, place to get stuff online. They they delivered it in this cool little box and inside this is the pen by the way not only was there a pen but there were these I think it came with a, with a fine steel nib sorry for my fingers I've been working with super glue and ink bad combo uh, tell you what let's fix that there that's better yeah even I can get disgusted with my fingers um, there's something about Gorilla Glue it's just gonna take some time to get rid of but onto the pen so so this one came with a fine uh, steel nib I haven't used it yet but I will during this video I'm pretty sure these are ebonite uh, feeds, which is pretty cool. It also came with two of these. That's a Zebra G titanium coated pen, which re is really like a dip nib pen, but it uh, has been adapted to with a uh, converter so it can fit in this pen. There were, there were two of these. By the way, the titanium coating is supposed to make it just a little bit smoother, uh, but more importantly, it'll make it last longer because these are steel. I have some experience with those nibs. This is a Jinhao 159. Is I can scrape out the feed so it delivers more ink and then write with it on this. Although this can sometimes be blobby, sometimes gets clogged uh, sometimes you know railroad uh, so I wasn't I was really happy with the amount of flex you could get out of it but not much else I did do a review of this pen though one of my first ones I think all right well the other thing interesting about this uh, converter it's a it's a piston feed converter and they set it up so it screws in, which is kind of interesting. You probably can't see the feed in there. Flush with a little groove, a little feed feed hole. The pen itself is a nice hefty pen. It's made from uh, hard rubber that's been chastened. It says, uh, so it's this mulatto down here, Osprey, and it's basically got this etched, scratched in design there's some cool things about this. The clip has got it's a roller, rollerball kind of clip. It's a kind of nice little feature. I have inked this up already. By the way, the ink that I'll be demonstrating this with is I don't know how to pronounce this. Diatramentus pearlescent ink chameleon red copper. De Atramentis. Wonder how you really say that. Um, because when you can flex a lot, why not use a shimmer ink? Especially if it's not a really super expensive pen. So you won't ruin anything. But there's nothing in here that can't be cleaned out really well. So I'm not really worried about it. Again, I th I'm pretty sure this is an ebonite feed in here. Inside. Got the converter, Isn't that pretty ink. One thing that I didn't particularly like is that the threads on this thing aren't cut as well as they should be. You have to fiddle a little bit or, or you end up stripping them. There. Maybe there's something I can do to make that better, but. 
The, uh, the other thing I like is you don't see this every day. You know, I like to post my, my caps. Most of the time they stay there. Other times you put it on there, especially if they're vintage pens, you worry about cracking the cap because you're pushing it down on the back of the barrel and you're putting too much pressure on it. But this one is threaded. And I kind of like that. I mean, one downside is I really kind of like to have the clip in line with the top of the nib. And you can do that by, by fiddling around. You know, there's the same issue here with um, the threads not being cut as well as they should. You can always figure it out. There we go. There, now that's perfect. Um, so now it fits really, now it fits really well in my hand. Can I write without it? Sure, it's, it's kind of that big of a pen. In fact, okay, posted, it is six and three quarters inches. Unposted, it is f almost five and a half inches, and the diameter of this thing is about a half an inch, a little bit more than a half an inch. So that's pretty good. I like the fact that people are still making uh, pens out of ebonite. It's a, it's a good material, and when you work a lot with um, older vintage pens. Um, even though there's a weakness in that they don't like water and with moisture and humidity they'll start to oxidize and turn brown. Um, it's just, it's a nice connection to the past. So let's see how it writes. This has been sitting out in the air for a while so I'm not sure if it's going to uh, Oh, do you see the, uh, the shimmer in there? It's kind of cool. Okay, it's still got stuff in it. So I'll show you how fine this thing. These, these Zebra G nibs are just great. Oh, I guess that's the other uh, downside I should mention is that uh, to make these things last, and the, there's instructions online with them as well, is you should really um, wash this, dry it, have it standing straight up like this for a while while it's drying, and then cap it so it stays dry, and then it'll last you a real long time. A an uncoated nib may only last, I don't know, a week or so. Uh, if you don't you go through all this stuff, this is supposed to last four times longer than that. Uh, they are cheap. There's a box like this I bought for um, a Jin Hao, and I want to say this was like ten bucks for for ten nibs, roughly. So, and for me, they're pretty easy to replace. There is one thing I wanted to show you that's kind of neat, is. Um, besides this being threaded so that you can post it, you can also unscrew the back with access for filling and putting more ink down into the nib, that, those sorts of things, without um, getting your, your fingers full of ink. I think I would still find a way to do that, though. Okay, so let me post this. And, uh, by the way, I've changed inks. I was, I did have it inked up with this, and it was working perfectly last night, but I left it in the pen overnight. I think that's not something you're supposed to do. Um, you're supposed to clean it out. And I just did that, and instead of doing that, I know that a, a nice, wetter ink works better on this stuff. So right now I'm uh, loaded with uh, Pilot's Iroshizuku Gal. First those fine lines. And 
and let's show you the flex capability. It's letting a lot of ink out. So the fine lines. Fine lines are like triple extra fine. And the fat lines are fatter than, um, this is probably like 4B. It's fatter than 1.4 millimeters. So let's do some more writing. At full flex, it puts out a lot of ink. So for the people out there who like wet inks, it responds pretty quickly. best handwriting, but I do have fun with doing this. So for 90 bucks, that's a pretty good deal. Let's, let's see what their regular nib is like with the same ink. So we'll load up the steel nib. Well, this one has got a different um, filling mechanism. It's a slide piston. This is the fine steel nib. That's interesting. Comes out pretty wet. Feels pretty firm, so I don't think. Yeah, zero flex. I guess you can't have all your nibs be flexy. So I won't do the rest. It's just a plain steel nib, nothing special about it. It's um it's nice and smooth, that's for sure. And it's pretty wet with this particular ink. First started writing with this, the the ink flowed out quite a bit and it was actually blobbing on the paper. So what I did is I undid this, made sure that the piston was backed all the way out, cleaned it off a little bit, and then started all over again. 
They do warn you when you first get any of these nibs that you should wash them or clean them first. I didn't do that. So, because it's working, it's working great right now. So, so what do I like about it? I like that it's made out of ebonite or black hard rubber. Um, has that nice connection to the past. I like the clip. I like the fact that you can screw in the post and not worry about it anymore. I like the fact that you can unscrew this back end and have access to the converter. And then if you want to get your hands dirty, <laughs> you can unscrew it down here. I really like the fact that they use a ebonite, ebonite feed and that you can put in zebra G nibs so I can get you know really nice fancy line variations like that. So that's a lot of good going for it. I also like the fact that they give you two of these in addition to the regular fine nib. So that's all great. What I don't like about it is the I guess you'd call it the fit and finish that you have to be careful when you screw this on. Like right there it's it's catching and if I push that it would um, call the threads. So kind of have to play with it there and um, same same when you post it although I put a little bit of silicone grease on there and that helped a lot but did the same down here and it didn't so that's not so good the other thing I didn't like is there there was a lot of stuff off camera that you didn't see when I put the um, the regular nib on here, uh, when I first started riding with it, I got big globs. Now they do warn you that you need to thoroughly clean and wash, flush the, the nib beforehand, and I didn't do that with that one. I did do it with this one, and I got pretty good ink flow. But it's, it's not like a fountain plan where you can ink up and two days later do it again and a week later do it again. I mean, you might have luck and be able to do that. But with this particular one, I'm finding if you want it to work like that, you've got to clean and dry this. I think it's okay to leave the ink in, but then store it like this. So it's not like a fountain pen you could stick in your pocket. Maybe you could ink it up one day stick it in your pocket and use that day but when you get home you better clean this and dry it and let it sit like this for a while even with these they don't work straight off you've got to run some ink through it and clean it a little bit um, purge it with water let it dry uh, and then it seems to be okay but it's also kind of picky about inks I didn't mention this earlier but uh, when I used a fairly dry ink, like this Pelican 4001 uh, Brilliant Black, it, it would kind of railroad all the time. So I went to you know, a wetter ink, like, the, like this stuff, and, and it went fine. And, and maybe you'd have this with any pen. Uh, this worked great last night, but I didn't clean it up overnight sat there. I, I washed out a little bit, but not really sufficient to uh, clean up, so it didn't work with that. So it takes some fiddling with to get the results you want. Can't really put it in your pocket for very long. It, it's just not like a regular pen. But balance that against being able to to do this cool line variation because I'm a flex nut I'm glad I got this and I'm gonna keep it I'm not gonna sell it and I'll, uh, I'll change the nib when it wears out maybe this is just a problem with this particular one but it shouldn't be like that I don't think I've ever had a pen that kinda of bound up when you try to put the cap on and then when you get it right it's, it's just perfect but that's not perfect 
So I wouldn't recommend this for everyone. It's for those of you who, who like to write in this style and maybe get tired of using a dip pen. There are other pens out there that are using these nibs, but this is the first one that I, that I bought that was specifically designed and set up to use these, these nibs. So I hope you got some value out of it, and that is the end of this video.